Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Solutions for Stepper Motor Control from Theory to Practice. My name is Yuri Keperda and I'm Product Marketing Engineer responsible for motor drivers at ST Microelectronics. Thank you for taking time out and being here today. Today, we will be looking at the following. Stepper motor theory, ST solutions for stepper motors, Power Step 01 advanced stepper driver, ST evaluation tools for stepper motors, tips and tricks, technical support, and we will be running a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. Let's start with a short stepper motor theory. A stepper motor is a brushless synchronous electrical motor. The electrical pulses are converted into mechanical shaft rotation. ST motor drivers support the bipolar configuration of stepper motors. A bipolar stepper motor has two coils or faces. Each coil can be energized positive and negative depending on the current flow. There are four total combinations how the magnetic field inside the motor can be created. Case number one. Both coils A and B are energized positive because both current flow positive with respect to the rotor reference position, lower right quadrant. Case number two. Coil A is energized negative, the coil B positive. The rotor moves to the lower left quadrant. Case number three, both coils A and B are energized negative. The rotor moves to the upper left quadrant. Case number four, coil A is energized positive and coil B negative. The motor moves to the upper right quadrant. We need to perform four electrical steps in order to complete one mechanical rotation in this simplified picture. Most stepper motors have a step angle of 1.8 degree. It means there are 200 steps required to make one full mechanical rotation. It is possible to increase the number of mechanical positions of the rotor between two consecutive steps. This can be achieved by changing the levels of the current using two sinusoidal profiles delayed by a 90 degree. We will get a sine and cosine waveform. Each position of the rotor can be achieved applying the proper pair of currents to the phases. This pair is determined by the sine and cosine values of the target value. The microstepping technique theoretically allows us to achieve any position of the rotor. The numbers of levels in which a single step is divided represents the microstepping resolution. For example, in quarter microstepping, the single step is divided in four microsteps. Four step plot pulses are needed to perform a single step movement. Increasing the microstepping resolution results in a smoother profile in higher number of uh, step plot pulses for each mechanical step. The main advantage of the microstepping is the smoother operation compared to the full or the half step. The step movement is split in sub-movements, so the resulting rotation is more continuous. The main drawback is the reduction of the maximum output torque at the same maximum current. In fact, in microstepping, 
the motor phases are driven with the maximum current one at a time. The sine peak corresponds to the cosine zero crossing, whereas in full step mode, both phases can be driven at the maximum current at the same time. Each phase of two phases bipolar stepper motor is driven by an H bridge power stage. ST current mode control devices like L6400 family power step 01 apply a non dissipative current sensing and PWM techniques in order to implement a feedback current control in each of two phases. The R shunt in this particular picture has only an illustrative purpose. The bridge topology ensures that the motor can spin in two directions. At the power up, the motor is energized in one direction. The phase current I phase rises in given direction according to the motor electrical characteristics. When the I peak current level is reached, indicated by VREF level on R shunt resistor, the starting phase is over and the decay is applied. The current flows diagonally through high side and low side MOSFETs. The RDS on losses are neglected here for simplicity. However, the proper calculation of the power losses in the H bridge is important. Next step is slow decay. During the slow decay, the phase current recirculates only in the high side or only in the low side switches of the power bridge. The current is reduced only using the RL discharge. Lower current ripple, lower noise, and power dissipation are the advantages for slow decay mode. The current decrease ratio may occasionally be insufficient due to the fixed off time scheme. During on time phase, the current increases in the original direction diagonally through the high side and low side switch. The IP current level is sent again and triggers next step, fast decay described on the next slide. During the fast decay, the supply voltage is applied in a reverse polarity. This brings more effective control action at the cost of increased current ripple, higher noise, and power dissipation. I would like to stress here to not forget the properly sized bus capacitor, which can absorb the energy coming from the motor during the fast decay. An efficient strategy of appropriate decay mode has to be adopted by the control algorithm in order to achieve accurate control of the desired current profile. The current control algorithm consists in continuous selection of the right decay which has to be applied and finding the best trade-off between slow and fast decay and a setting of its actual duration. The current control in ST products is realized by peak current control with fixed off time for L6200 family drivers, peak current control with adaptive DK for L6474 driver, and predictive current control for the drivers with digital motion engine. Next few slides will describe ST motor control solutions for stepper motors. We are offering broad portfolio of stepper motor drivers starting with a device for mobile and portable applications up to the system in package solution which can handle up to 85 volt and 10 amp RMS. The driver from ST Spin 200 family is dedicated for mobile and portable applications with low 
requirement. A system 800 family extends the voltage range up to 45 volt. Typical applications are ATM machines, 3D printers, medical devices, and industrial applications, for example, when control. The L6400 family represents the advanced stepper motor drivers with digital motion engine built in. These drivers have advanced algorithm options and high-level commands over the SPI. These features allow to customers build more complex systems like stage lighting, factory automation, and high-complex industrial tools with several stepper motors. The PowerStep 01 is the very first driver based on system-in-package technology. All drivers are protected by a set of protections which include overcurrent and thermal protection. Let's have a look more in detail what is inside of ST Spin 220 stepper driver. The voltage range is from 1.8 volt to 10 volt, which is one of the lowest in the industry. Two full edge bridges can energize the coils of the bipolar stepper motor up to 1.3 amp RMS due to the low RDS on, which is 400 milliamps measured across the high side and low side together. The ST spin 220 has a step clock and a direction pin for PWM control with programmable of time. The microstepping resolution is 1 over 256 microsteps. One of the key requirements for mobile or portable applications is a quiescent current. The ST Spin 220 has only 80 nanoamp leakage current in sleep mode due to the fact that the entire logic is disconnected from the power supply using a built in semiconductor switch. The driver is protected with a full set of protections non dissipative overcurrent protection, cross conduction protection, thermal shutdown and under voltage lockout. The ST Spin H20 driver can be used up to 45 volt and can handle 1.5 amp RMS with 2.5 amp peak. The ST Spin A20 has a similar feature like ST Spin 220. It has 1 over 256 microstepping resolution, current control with programmable off time, low standby power consumption, and same set of protections, overcurrent protection, thermal shutdown, cross-conduction protection, and under-voltage lockout. The ST Spin 820 has a 4x4 QFN package. The L6400 series are the drivers with digital motion engine and advanced control algorithm. All drivers from this family are using the SPI bus. The SPI bus is used for a communication with the microcontroller for register configuration and on-fly diagnostic. The L6400 family provides predictive current control algorithm for an accurate positioning and the adaptive auto-regulated DK provides the system stability and low noise. The L6470 and the L6480 drivers with ST patented voltage walk algorithm can improve the noise performance further. The L6470 and L6472 are monolithical drivers with current capability up to 3 amp RMS based on the package selection. The L6480 and L6482 are controllers which allows to adjust and customize the power stage, selecting the proper MOSFETs according to design requirements. The monolithic driver's operating voltage range is between 8 volt and 45 volts. The controllers can operate up to 85 volts. The PowerStep 01 is the most advanced driver 
from ST portfolio or stepper motors. Both control modes are available. The current control mode, like L6472 and L6482, and also voltage mode, like L6470 and L6480. The Power Step 01, besides all features available at L6400 family, offers also enhanced current capability and thermal performance. The Power Step 01, thanks to the system in package topology, can achieve up to 10 amp RMS current. The eight discrete MOSFETs are integrated together with a digital motion engine controller in one single high performance QFM 11 by 14 millimeter package. The system in package solution reduced the PCB area by 67% and the integration improves the performance and reduces the bill of material. More details about the electrical performance of Power Step 01 is on the next chapter. The overview of the electrical characteristics of Power Step 01. The operating voltage range is between 7.5 volt and 85 volt. Low RDS on MOSFETs, which are built inside the package, allows you to energize the coils of the stepper motor up to 10 amp RMS. One of the key factors important to achieve such a high current is also proper PCB layout. The Power Step 01 has a built-in overcurrent protection based on MOSFET drain source drop. The microstepping resolution is 1 over 128 microsteps in the voltage mode and 1 over 16 microsteps in the current mode. The sensorless stall detection is available in voltage mode and allow the system to detect when the motor stalls. The digital motion engine makes the speed profiling easy using the high-level commands. This is accomplished by high-speed 5 MHz STI interface with daisy chain compatibility. It has integrated 16 MHz oscillator, integrated 5-bit A to D converter, and the 15 and 3.3 voltage regulators are part of the controller. The Power Step 01 is protected by overcurrent protection, thermal shutdown, and under voltage lockout. These fault conditions can be monitored by status register. Now, there is a time to talk about integrated intelligence built inside the Power Step 01. The architecture shown here is an example of free axis control system before Power Step 01 integration. The system MCU controls three dedicated MCUs with lower level routine, directly driving stepper controllers with gate drivers and MOSFETs. The GPIOs of the dedicated microcontroller are connected to step clock and direction inputs on the controller side. New architecture with Power Step 01 brings completely new approach, not only integrated several components of the system in one single package, but it brings also the control scheme to the new level. As you see, overall, the three axis system was significantly simplified to four main blocks, one system MCU and three Power Step 01 directly driving three stepper motors. MCU and drivers are connected via high-speed SPI bus. There is no more dedicated MCU to perform speed profile and position calculations. The digital motion engine will take care of those calculations. The Power Step 01 has a fully digital interface to MCU. One single MCU can control multiple daisy chain drivers over the SPI bus. Programmable alarm flag open drain output can be used as a trigger for an interrupt routine. 
busy open drain output allows the MCU to know when the last command has been performed. In daisy chain configuration, busy pins of different devices can be or wired to save host controller GPIOs. Busy pin can be used as a sync signal, giving a feedback of the step clock signal to MCU. The power step of one can accept different types of commands. Constant speed command, absolute position command, a relative position command, and there is also step clock mode. In a step clock mode, the motor motion is defined by step clock signal applied to the step clock pin. At each step clock rising edge, the motor is moved one microstep in the program direction and absolute position is consequently updated. A constant speed command produces a motion in order to reach and maintain a user-defined target speed starting from program minimum speed set in the minimum speed register and with the program acceleration and deceleration value set in the acceleration and deceleration register. A new constant speed command can be requested anytime. An absolute position command produces a motion in order to reach a user-defined position that is sent to the device together with the command. Motion commands produce a motion in order to perform a user-defined number of microsteps in user-defined direction that are sent to the device together with the command. Move command, perform a motion of number of steps in the selected direction. This command can be performed only when the motor is stopped. Go to target command. Reach the target position using shortest path. This command can be performed only when the motor is stopped or is running at constant speed. Go to direction. Command. Reach the target position moving the motor in the selected direction. This command can be performed only when the motor is stopped or is running at the constant speed. In most applications, the power-up position of the stepper motor is undefined, so an initialization algorithm driving the motor to a known position is necessary. The go until and a release switch command can be used in combination with an external limit switch input. The go until command moves the mechanical load at the constant speed until the switch input is forced low. When this event occurs, one of the following actions can be performed. ABS underscore POS register is set to zero and the motor decelerates to zero. ABS underscore POS register value is stored in the mark register and the motor decelerates to zero speed. The release SW command moves the mechanical load with program minimum speed until SW input is forced high. When this event occurs, one of the following actions can be performed. ABS underscore POS register is set to zero, meaning home position, and the motor immediately stops. ABS underscore POS register value is stored in the mark register and the motor stops immediately, similarly as a hard stop command. The power step of one has two fundamentally different modes, current peak control mode and voltage mode control. On the left side, you can find the sinusoidal curve typical for microstepping. On the right side, you can find a zoom in of this waveform, specifically focusing on the change from one current level to the next one. We can make few observations, abrupt current change and change in the switching period. Those factors 
leads to more jerky and noisy motion compared to voltage mode driving. Also, the peak current control technique brings into the system a systematic error due to the difference between the peak current and the average current during steady state conditions. This error leads to an accurate position. Very similar picture for voltage mode. In voltage mode, the system applies a sinusoidal voltage to motor and a phase. The phase current is not directly controlled. It is open loop approach. It takes more clock cycles to move from one current level to another one, which is a consequence of keeping the switching frequency constant. In this case, the system works like the low pass filter. The torque ripple is under control and the average current is under control. Overall, the voltage mode provides more softer and silent operation. Now we can summarize the trade-offs between voltage mode and current mode. The voltage mode allows true 1 over 128 microstep resolution. It has outstanding smoothness at low speed. It allows a stall detection. There is no need for shunt resistor and we can achieve very precise positioning. On the other side, the current control mode provides better torque control at high speed. It is less sensitive to the vibration and is more robust to mechanical resonance. The gate driver setup depends on the application requirements and finding the right values is more complex because several parameters are in the game. The same gate charge value can be obtained by using different combinations of TCC and I gate. Both parameters, uh, TCC and I gate, are programmable. The gate current can be set to one of the following values 4, 8, 16, 24, 32, 64, and 96 milliamp through the I gate parameter in the gate CFG register. Controlled current time can be programmed within range from 125 nanosecond to 3.75 microsecond with a resolution of 125 nanoseconds. If we increase the I gate value, the power dissipation is lower, but the EMI will increase. If we increase the TCC time, the power dissipation is higher, but the EMI is lower. We can see here the same trade-off between TCC and I gate from different perspectives. Higher gate current allows reducing the commutation time. It means the slew rate is higher, but there are more harmonics. It means more EMI. On the other side, longer commutation time requires less gate current mm -hmm. with positive impact on the EMI performance due to the slower slew rate. The power dissipation will increase. Be careful here. During the bridge commutation, a dead time is added in order to avoid cross conductions. The dead time can be programmed within a range from 125 nanoseconds to 4 microseconds with a resolution of 125 nanoseconds. The duration of blanking time is programmable through the T blank parameter in gate CFG2 register. We prepared for your convenience this lookup table where you can find different slew rate settings for the corresponding parameters. The evaluation system is based on the nuclear platform with STN32 and STN32 open development environment. The STN32 open development environment is an open, flexible, easy, and affordable way to develop innovative devices 
and applications based on the STM32 microcontroller family combined with other state-of-the-art ST components connected via expansion boards. It enables fast prototyping with leading edge components that can be quickly transformed into the final designs. The STM32 ODE include the following five elements. STM32 Nucleo Development Boards, STM32 Nucleo Expansion Boards, STM32 Cube Software, STM32 Cube Expansion Software, and STM32 ODE Function Packs. The X Nucleo IHM03A1 with Power Step 01 is a compatible with the Arduino Uno R3 connector and supports the addition of other boards which can be stacked to drive up to three stepper motors with a single STM32 nucleo board. The connector allows to connect also other nucleo shield boards with connectivity ICs and wide range of ST MEMS and sensors. The thermal performance is limited due to the form factor of the PCB. The X-Cube SPN3 is an expansion software package for STM32 Cube. The software runs on the STM32 and includes driver recognition for PowerStep01 device. The expansion is built on STM32 Cube software technology to ease portability across different STM32 microcontrollers. It is compatible with the Nucleo F401, Nucleo F030, Nucleo F334, and Nucleo L053 boards connected to one, two, or three X Nucleo IHM 03A1 STM32 expansion boards. The software comes with a sample implementation of the drivers to control a stepper motor. The SPIN family evaluation tool is a Windows-based software whose purpose is to control ST SPIN family devices. It requires the Microsoft.NET 2 framework. Device configuration can be done through a registry editor, a user-friendly configuration panel, or a wizard. The wizard contains predefined configurations for existing demonstration boards and allows easily configuring the devices. Configurations can be stored and loaded. For the Nucleo board IHM03, we will select Nucleo tab, correct comfort, and power step 01 option. The main dashboard divides an access to all features and configuration settings. The indicators provide us visual feedback from the status register. Now it's time to watch video with live demo prepared by my colleague Rosario. Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Rosario Tanasio, Applications Manager for ST Microelectronics. In this part of uh, the webinar, I will show you how simple and quick it is to spin a stepper motor using ST hardware and software tools. The demonstration will take uh, just a couple of minutes, so let's dive in. The hardware and software I'm going to use consists of a nucleo board STM32F401RE, an expansion board with the power step 01, the IHM 03A1, a power supply capable of providing 12 volt 1.5 amps, such as the EVL STCH 336W SR, a bipolar stepper motor, a USB cable, the Spin Family Software GUI SW Spin 002, which is available on st.com, and a laptop. 
Here is a picture of uh, the final hardware setup. Once the Nucleo board is connected to the laptop and 12 volts are applied to the shield board, the next step is to upload the firmware to the MCU. The firmware is located in a dedicated folder of the Spin Family Evaluation Tool. By default it can be found under Start menu, All Programs, ST Microelectronics, and here you will find the shortcut to firmware. In this folder you have all the binary files uh, relative to the supported uh, STM32. So we will choose the STM32 F4, drag and drop this file to the nuclear device, which will be seen as a mass storage device. You can close this window and double click on the Spin Family Evaluation Tool icon. We select the power step 01, close this window and check that the board is connected. If the board for any reason is not connected, from this connect to board icon we can connect or disconnect the nuclear board. At this point we will read and clear the status registers and open the wizard. Click on next and we can select between the voltage mode and the current mode configuration. I will choose the current mode configuration and click on next. Here we can select the advanced current control settings. First of all, I will set the value of the sensor resistor for the IHM03A1. It is 100 milliohm. Then I will select the value of run, hold, acceleration and deceleration current. For this demonstration, I will choose one amp for each of them. OK, click on next. From here, we can uh, uh, select the gate driver settings. For this demonstration, I will keep the recommended ones and click on Next. In this window, we can uh, choose uh, the speed profile settings. First of all, we will uh, define the step mode. We can choose between full, half and micro step. I will select uh, micro step, one over 64 steps. Then I will uh, select the value of the maximum speed, 1000 steps per second and the full step speed of 700 steps per second. The full step speed is the speed at which the controller will transition from micro stepping operation to full step. And I will click on next. In this window we can select the alarms relative to the protections supported by the power step 01. I will keep the default configuration and click on next. Here we can check uh, the summary of uh, all uh, the settings that we have chosen. We can save uh, this uh, configuration to file, uh, providing uh, a name, test, click on save, and finally write the configuration to the device. Click on OK and close this window. From the speed tab, I can access uh, the uh, speed configuration register and I can set a running speed of 400 steps per second. If I click on run, the motor will start. On the oscilloscope, you can see the waveform is uh, sinusoidal. This is the current in one of the two phases of the bipolar stepper motor. It has a sinusoidal shape, sinusoidal shape which is typical of a micro stepping operation. Now we change the speed to 900 steps per second. If I click on run, on the oscilloscope you can see now the current waveform has changed because we have set at 700 steps per second the transition speed from micro step to full step. Finally, we can stop the motor by choosing the hard IZ option, which will put the inner impedance, the two MOSFET bridges, inside the power step 01. We have now reached the end of this demonstration. Thank you very much for your attention and for more information please visit www.st.com. Thank you very much Rosario for your demo and now there is a time to share some tips and tricks. Now, I would like to share with you some experience with my customers. One of the most common questions I'm receiving from the customers is, I'm losing the torque at a higher speed. What is your recommendation?
Let's have a look more in details, step by step. First of all, I would like to stress the need of using the current probe. Figure 1 shows nice sinusoidal current waveform for a phase current of 1 amp at the speed of 800 steps per second. Now, if we increase the speed to 1000 steps per second, as shown on the picture 2, we can observe some waveform distortion. Instead of having a nice sinusoidal curve, as on the picture 1, the current waveform became more triangular type of waveform rather than sinusoidal. Clearly, the current is not following the ideal reference curve. If we are increasing the speed farther as on the figure 3, clearly the current waveform becomes now pure triangular waveform indicating the limits of the system. What is the root cause? Is the driver limit or stepper motor limit? Let's have a look on the figure 4 where we increase the speed again to 1400 steps per second. Now we can observe that also the amplitude has decreased. There are two factors which are causing this phenomenon. The back EMF is directly proportional to the speed, so we will get a higher back EMF at a higher speed. This back EMF is stealing the available voltage from the power supply. The second reason is the general behavior of the impedance with resistance and inductance in series past the corner frequency. We can neglect J omega L term at lower frequencies. Once we pass the corner frequency, the impedance will increase and it will be directly proportional to the frequency. As an outcome, the amplitude will be smaller. There are two possible solutions. Replacing the current motor with a motor with lower inductance and the second solution can be more complex since it requires a gearbox. Another very common question is if the driver can compensate the loss of the torque at the higher speed. First, let's compare those two waveforms. Both pictures are showing current waveforms at the same speed. The waveform on the left side has half step resolution and the waveform on the right side shows the current waveform at the full step. The area under the curve is a smaller at the half step resolution than at the full step. In order to get more torque, we need more energy, meaning more area under the curve. If we are able to switch from microstepping, in this case from half stepping to the full step resolution, we can boost the torque. The power step 01 has built in feature which allow you to boost the torque at a higher speed. When the motor speed is greater than a programmable full step speed threshold, the device switches automatically to full step mode. The driving mode returns to micro stepping when the motor speed decreases below the full step speed threshold. Going back to the micro stepping ensures again the smooth and high resolution. The boost threshold is set through the related parameter in the FS underscore SPD register. The SD Nucleo ecosystem has also solutions for those who would like to evaluate and test more complex systems, for example, with more than one stepper motor. The Nucleo ecosystem with Power Step 01 allows to build a system with up to three IHM03A1 evaluation boards. In order to ensure proper communication over the SPI bus, small hardware modifications are required. Quick overview is on this slide and more details about zero ohm resistor placement can be found in the user manual UM1910. Once we finish the hardware modifications, we can put those boards together and now they are ready for the complex and advanced testing.
If the hardware was properly modified and connected, you should observe two or three highlighted rectangles on top of the main control window. It depends on the number of connected boards. If not, please double check the hardware modifications again. Now you can control both motors at the same time from one window. The limit of three evaluation boards come from the nuclear hardware and the number of boards can be expanded up to eight evaluation boards with EVL power step 01 board if necessary. The last feature which I would like to mention here is the built-in Python bait script editor. The Python and its extension for motor control is a very powerful tool for more intensive evaluation of the prototype. Especially if we are running system with several motors performing complex speed profiles and also it can be used as a demonstrator or proof of concept in front of your management. We are approaching the end of today's webinar. We understand how important is the technical support for our customers. There are several ways how you can obtain more information. You can always go on www.sp.com for more information. Or you can contact us through the distribution channels or directly through the sales reps in your territory. This presentation includes the list of frequently asked application notes for your future reference. And also on the next slide, you can find the extensive list of evaluation boards for our stepper motor control. Thank you very much for your attendance. 